Well, hello, it's Shannon from Audio Energy here again this week, and uh, this week we're going to look at a little bit more in some sound tests of our stereo miking we did last week. So stick around. Okay, um, what we did last week is that we looked at uh, how to set up three different formations for stereo mic recording. Uh, one was the XB, uh, sorry, XY. Um, the other one was uh, the AB or space pair. And the third one was the AUTIF configuration. Okay, so these are all different configurations. There are other ones. There's mid side, there's blom line. Um, they're used for sort of more uh, slightly different areas of recording and then they're not quite stereo spatial miking like this is it's they're kind of applied to other tactics and techniques so we're going to look at these three main ones and uh, i'm going to show you a sound recording of how they actually work how in, let's see if we can actually hear a lot of difference between these now the room i'm recording in is a little hollow a little echoey uh it's all i've got at the moment however in the meantime i'm going to start by doing some screen recording and we'll show you actually how to set up two tracks very simple, and you just repeat this process whenever you have extra instruments and things that you want to do. So let's look at this first. So I'm going to start my screen recorder. Let's go here, and we'll hit record. And that should be recording now. Now, uh, this is the blank interface for Pro Tools 12.5. I'm going to go Control Shift N. If it was, oh, let's hang on a minute. There we are. Now, Control Shift N. And I want to put two where it's highlighted green in this region here. We want mono tracks. We also want audio, okay, because we're not using other instruments. We're recording direct audio. And I'm just going to click Create. So there we are. And if I flick over, there's our two tracks. You can see they're mono. We have our meter. And um, when I turn these on, I'm going to activate both the recorder and the monitoring tracks, okay? So what you can see now is that we're going straight up the center for the recording in each one. Uh, these are highlighted red, so I know that they're ready to record, and I've got my monitors on. And what the monitors do is basically um, um, allow you to see the input gain on your speakers. Right? Now, on my sound card, on my interface here, I also, I'll just turn my 48 volt up there, because there might be feedback coming through. Um, I have to use 48 volt because, as we've discussed before, condenser mics need 48 volt um, to give that extra drive, which also gives a lot of benefits. If you're not sure, just look up uh, Audio Energy Steam It, and you can see a couple of um, uh, blogs and things that I've done on that new blog that I'm using on steamit.com, Audio Energy, where you type in audio NRG, and you'll find it there. Um, so what we've basically done uh, is a, this, the series is leading up to this and I'm showing you how this is all being put together. So we have our active tracks. I'm going to switch back to the other view here. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to put my 48 volt back on. We make our tracks, we arm and record them, but I might just turn the recorders off for now. And what we want to do is we click on now, first in out, we go to interface, and now I'm using track or input three on my sound card. And they're mono tracks, okay? So it's input three, three, and input three, four for that one. Okay? So input three, three, input three, four. Now I'll turn my recorders back on again. There we are. Now it's not actually recording at the moment. What you're seeing is these uh, microphones here, and they're picking up my voice. Okay? And so, um, I can see that these are monitoring, they're not recording, but they're certainly picking up a signal. So I'm going to click in front of the microphone, I know that one, that's the left, that's the right. So I'm going to call these, let's rename these, audio one is, uh, just call it stereo left, and the other one we call it stereo right. Okay, we'll just do a GH. All right. You can also put it down in the comments here. Um, what some people do is uh, when you're in the studio, you might just put um, M5 left or M5L 
and then M5R. So we know that these are the Rode M5 mics. And then you can just put your comments down here. You can say, you know, um, M5 at such and such a distance using um, the XY formation, okay? And um, if I wanted to, I could duplicate those, but we'll, um, you'll see at the end um, how I've done all the tracks, okay? So, and what I'll do is I'm going to reassign these names, okay? And I'm going to pause the recording and then I'll add the second part of the video on, okay, after I've done all these recordings. So, that's how you set it up. Very simple, very straightforward, and these are ready to go shortly. I've got my 48 volt on, I've got everything um, organized here that I need to have organized, and uh, we're good to go for recording. And I'll be back very shortly once it's all done. Okay guys, we're back and I've done the recordings and I'm going to give you a whole lot of excuses why it doesn't sound good. Uh, the recording, the, the spatial stuff sounds good, it's just my playing sounds terrible because I haven't played in years like I said before. And, um, you know, not in the best environment, but I might even do a couple of things at the end here to show you how to you know, maybe clean things up and get it sounding a little bit better. But um, for the meantime, I'll put my uh, screen recorder back on and I just want to show you these spatial things. Okay, so we'll go continue... So hopefully that's recording now. Okay, so let's switch over to it. So this is the XY configuration, and uh, this is just raw recording straight in. And so this is how she uh, might just cut that end there, and uh, let's play from here. You can have a listen to this. So you can see, um, I'm just soloing these two much even balance when you... so you can see there this is XY and the the two um, if you have a look at the picture that I put at the beginning of this section um, the, for the XY you can see that they're actually both got good level um, volumes here because the diaphragms are sitting right over the top of each other okay so it gives it a spatial effect but it also um, gives a good balance volumes and this is why a lot of people like it Okay, so play it again. Now have a listen to this. So you can hear there, like when I'm spreading the sound out and I pan these really full to each side, uh, it just really widens the effect and spans things out, but the sound is still level, still sitting in the center, okay? Now let's move on to the next one. Uh, this is Audif. I actually like using this screen better. Uh, let's turn these on and solo these. Each recording is different, a little bit. Uh, I'll just trim the edges here and let's, uh, let's go. So you can hear that, uh, you can see, you can see on the waveform that this one is stronger because this is pointing towards the sound hole. This one is weaker because it's pointing away from the sound hole, okay? Um, and it's pounding, uh, pointing towards the neck. So if you find that it's a slightly imbalanced um, you can always just reduce this down to about um, you know, a similar level and maybe give this a little bit more of a boost up. Yeah, let's give it a little bit more. Just be careful boosting this up because any other sounds that are in the background are going to be boosted, whereas when you're reducing this, um, there we are, that's pretty equal, pretty close. And you can see that there's a difference of about you know, 8 dB there, right? Um, so there's quite a bit of difference just between from 20 centimeters being, uh, being 20 centimeters or 10 centimeters apart from each other and away from each other. Uh, there's quite a difference in volume and sound. So, or I should say acoustic energy. Um, so I'm going to play this a little bit more and we'll span. They're running at the center. At the moment they're running up the center. Okay, and I'm going to uh, see how much we've got there. There's still a bit more to play. Mm 
you can see there, even when I play this last bit again, you know. So there's quite a bit of spatial difference between it, and the more you pan them hard left and right, the, the wider the sound's going to be, but it's still going to fill up that space, you know. It's just going to sound great. So, here we go. Um, this is, we'll do the um, space pair. This is a space pair now. Okay. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to play a little bit, and I'm going to play with the panning. Now, again, you can see that this is a little bit different. Okay, what I might do, actually, um, is just go back here with the... See if we can uh, bring this back to its normal self. There we are. So that's what they originally looked like. I did alter the, um, the sound because you're going to have some dominance in one sound and the other. Okay, now you can see the same is happening with this, but it's not as much as that. Okay, so the ortif really can create a, um, one signal being stronger and one being quite weaker, whereas the space pair, this one here, was closer to the sound hole. This one here was uh, further away from the sound hole, but they were equally facing the guitar at the same space uh, apart, and the same um, kind of bas basically equal equal on, you know, it's just that one was a little bit further. So I'm going to um, put these back to where they were so I can get a similar kind of sound. That was at, uh, that was about 4.8, I think this one was minus 4.6 or something. Um, let's go down a little bit. There. So that's what they were at. Now this one here, we're going to play this. Let's have a listen. You can see that this is lower in dB. So while they're actually at those standard volumes like this, I'm going to um, play with the left and right spread and you'll hear, hear the difference. So if I don't touch the dB levels, but just span them, you're going to see it's going to be a lot stronger in the, le in the right and a lot weaker in the left. But I want a balanced signal, okay? I don't want that sort of being too strong in the recording. Uh, I mean, if, if you really want the guitar placed to one side, you can actually keep it like this, it's fine, there's no problem. You don't have to equalize the, uh, the acoustic energy there. Um, you can actually keep it this way if you have other instruments and they're kind of spread out, spread throughout the, the acoustic field, you know, uh, or the spatial field, I mean. So you can spread them, but there's going to be a stronger signal on your right. So you can have other instruments, like maybe the bass going up the centre, a little drum going up the centre, and then a second guitar going to the right. And maybe you could have, um, uh, what else would be an acoustic? You know, maybe some shakers on the left, you know, hard left. And, you know, that's how it all starts to fit. So if you have, if you're actually recording a group and all you've got is two mics, you can actually do this spatial field. Uh, set up. You can do any one of these, but the best one would probably be if you've got a group, probably um, Ortif or um, probably even Space Pair would be the best. And just have them sitting front on to the band, um, as long as the band is sitting in a specific arrangement. You know, you've got to be careful of how you arrange the, the group as well. And uh, by not moving the or adjusting the acoustic energy, you can keep everything where it is and it will beautifully sit right in, in inside your um, your spatial field that you're creating for the entire entire environment you know it's going to uh, everything will be actually be pretty well balanced if, if you pan it here and there and just move, move things around a little bit EQ a little bit change the volumes but you don't actually have to adjust it the way 